Now, the human mind steps aside, giving way to new realms and reality alternatives. Welcome to the Alt Series. Again, welcome to the Alt Series, Shaud. This is number 11. It is the final channel of this series. So we're here in Louisville at the Crimson Circle Connection Center. Jeffrey Hoppe is getting ready, all ready to bring Adamus in, I think Adamus, to share with us some valuable information. We all seem to be able to move forward and feel supported. So, as always, let's begin with that deep and conscious breath, that breath of life. Take that good deep breath. Let the energies flow. Just get really comfortable. Let the distractions just melt away. This is a time you choose for you. Breathe. Let the energies flow. Feel the air as it fills your body. It's a breath of life. Breathe. I am here. I exist. Breathe with awareness and consciousness. Take that good deep breath, really feeling into this now moment with presence. Truly feel and breathe with presence. So feel into the energies of Adamas. He's here for each of us. Breathe him in. Allow it, flow with it as we go forward. Yeah. 
That I am Adamus of St. Germain. I too have been waiting for this moment all my life. <laughs> oh, truly, I have been uh, much more than you'll ever, ever know. Uh, and not just, not just <clears throat> my cake and coffee. Uh, we'll get back to the moment in just a moment. But ah, uh, thank you, dear. Uh, over here. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Oh. A little Happy coffee. Birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Thomas. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am the one. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, Thank you should so I, much. I love you. should I blow it out? Do you want me to? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, what a way to get the shout started. Yes, it was my birthday recently. We had a grand celebration at the Ascended Masters Club. Uh, oh, the the room was filled with food, music, dancing, jokes, and entertainment. Uh, we played a lot of. Um, well, we don't have videos like you have them. We just imagine, and suddenly everybody can see what you're imagining. They played uh, such tender moments that I'd had with them. Uh, they, they played beautiful recollections of my life past. And of course, uh, the greatest uh, one that they really talked about was my time in the crystal. I probably <laughs> haven't told you that story yet. But <laughs> no, it was, it was epic. Um, being trapped like you are right now. It was epic. No, you are. No, you say, but, but I'm an ascended master. Marco, you're an ascended master. What do you mean being trapped? You're, you're still trapped. No, no, you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you think you're not trapped. You know, even a, a realized as a master can be in prison. I mean, actually, there are a lot of realized masters in prison. You're free in one way. You're free within yourself. You realize that it's just an illusion, all these prison walls. But in another sense, you're still trapped. You're still stuck. Wall of fire. 
Wall of, wall of fire. Wall of fire. Yeah. Are you in or out? Uh, I'm still in there. You're still in the wall of I fire. I know, but it's okay. No, uh, no. Actually, being in the wall of fire, I mean, it's a big philosophical debate. Are you still in the wall of fire? Did you ever cross through? Are you still in the wall of fire, getting shattered into your billions and trillions and octillions of pieces, uh, uh, and just going through the experience right now? of being done with the fragmentation and now bringing your light together. And does it matter? Well, when you say it like that. Well, yeah, eventually So you, you, can, you can be uh, an embodied master and still stuck in a prison. Um, we're going we're gonna to break through that today, though. I'll, I'll tell you the end right now. We're going to start breaking through. A few of you will. And the others will follow. This is the moment you've been waiting for all of your life. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, and now, a little side discussion. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're done. A uh, little side discussion. Uh, Calder gets very upset with me when I talk about things like this. He's like, "But Adamas, you're making big promises. What if it doesn't happen? I don't care. I'm in the Ascended Masters Club." <laughs> We watch this carefully, and we feel into the energies and the flow, and I know when something is truly ready, and, and it is today. This, I'm going to say, is going to be a pretty epic moment, a turning point for so many of you. Uh, it's time to break loose. And again, many of you are truly embodied masters, but you're still locked in this prison of mass consciousness, so of time, space, gravity. This is the alt that you've been waiting for. This is the alt, and we'll talk about it more, but the alt is going from having to fight your way through things, having to effort, having to contend with the um, forces of this planet, and the alt is, well, the opposite, just receiving. That's breaking loose. That's breaking loose. We're going to start the process right now. It's, you've been leading up to it, and yes, you have incredible wisdom and you're marvelous uh, beings, but there's still that feeling in the air that there's something going to happen. Any of you had that feeling lately? S lately something is about to happen and you don't know what it is. Uh, as the song says, it's in the air tonight or this afternoon. And it is. Oh, I, I'm so excited. Uh, this, is, this is truly my moment. Uh, because we've been working together on this for a long, long time. And we've made incredible progress. You have. You have done some deep, deep diving. And it hurts. It really hurts at times. Wondering who you are, wondering if you're doing the right thing. At times, just wanting to back away from everything. N many of you, you don't even want to exist at times because you don't know how to, uh, to handle it. And, and you try this, you try that. They work to a degree, but not to the deep satisfaction of yourself and your soul. We've come this far now, what, how many months now since Heaven's Cross, and that light, uh, the consciousness, is now radiating, truly radiating within yourself allowing you to bring in even more. And now it's, it's truly time into the alt. And the alt is a total reversal of the way you and other humans have been living. The living, uh, the, the living template in the past has been you work hard and you die hard, <laughs> and then you come back for another lifetime to do the same thing. We're going to change that. We have to change it. It's already in the works of being changed. Now it's just recognizing what's going on and receiving that, allowing it. Let's take a good deep breath with that. This last month has, has been a little challenging for me, I have to say, pretty tough. Uh, last month I've gotten more customer service calls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about Crimson Circle. You, they have their own problems. I'm talking about me at the Ascended Masters Club. More of you calling up. Now, 
it was it was pretty tough many years ago. I mean, there was a lot of desperation calls, but I'm getting a lot of calls right now, a lot of uh, nighttime interaction with you. Frustrating, but you're frustrated. I mean, you're not. Fr- you're frustrated, <laughs> and frustrating. You're frustrated. You're like, when's it going to happen? What's going to happen? How do I break through this whole thing? How do I break through this body? Damn, how, how many of you have been hurting lately? Aches and pains and all. Oh, Damas, when am I going to break through this body? When is it going to land? All this work I've done, all the, the pushing and the fighting and the punching and the breathing. and oh, When is it just going to land? When is it going to actually work out? How much longer do I have to go along this really rough path? Because I'm sick and tired of it. That's what I have been hearing more this past month, my birthday month, of course, <laughs> than any other time. And that's good. No, it's good. I, I, I'm kind of complaining about how I have to deal with all of you, but it's good that you've got there, – there's um, – it's almost like an anger. And then you feel bad about being angry because you're supposed to be a spiritual person. Bullshit. That anger is moving something inside of you. It's okay to be angry, to say, when am I going to break through? I mean, really break through. You've had incremental breakthroughs, a lot of nice, um, you know, kind of a minor enlightenments, but when am I going to break through this whole concept of time and space and body and mind? I'm sick and tired of it, and I, and I don't want to keep. Uh, going to classes and, and doing shouts, we've got to do it or else. So I've been collecting your anger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and doing what with it? Oh, I'm going to throw it right back at you today. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you th- <coughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Poor college is choking on that one. <laughs> I've been uh, feeling into that anger. Kind of, kind of bringing it together, and and it's okay. Can you be okay that anger is okay, even for a spiritual person? You know, it's actually you're you're doing yourself more harm when you're trying to suppress it and oh everything's going to be okay. It's all good. No, it's not. No, it's not. You came into this lifetime not to be a a, a, a pansy, but uh, not not to just try to be love, light, and joy. You came in this life to make some momental, momentous changes in yourself and on this planet. The anger is good. I actually really like it because it's inspiring some of you. And, and it's okay. Just take a deep breath with that or take a whatever, stamp your feet, whatever you want. It's okay to have that anger, that frustration, that it's got to change now. Something's got to change. I'm sick and tired of it not of things going so damn slow. And the good news is that it is. I mean, this is all kind of coming together at the same time. We have the, the heaven's cross, your light coming in. It's actually, I, I sit back and you have to laugh sometimes. You probably don't think it's funny. It's your light that's making you so pissed off and <laughs> angry and upset and frustrated and just feeling something's got to change. Feel into it for a moment. You've got this new level of light, the new light coming in. And it's shining itself on all the old stuff, the feeling of being trapped in this reality, the feeling that you're still not, you're more connected with you, the human, but you're still not connected with you as your soul. And that light's coming in and it's shaking some stuff up. It's not a nice twinkly light. Because you don't want it that way. You want it to shake things up, move things, break through uh, the, the whole thing right now. So that light is shaking things up, and that's a good thing. Don't try to extinguish it. Don't try to put it down. Channel that feeling of frustration or anger or just uh, th- that whole feeling of rah. You just want to scream out. And it's okay to scream out. You want to do that now? Okay, now some people might get offended. No, we're supposed to be quiet and calm. <laughs> Hell no, let's scream out just, ah! 
Wow, there's a lot of saying. <laughs> yeah. All right, do that again. <laughs> there's a lot of passion in there, a lot, of, a lot of desire to truly move things right now. And the timing is perfect. It all ties in to the heaven's cross, to the light, to the change, to what's going on on this planet right now. And you know the planet is going crazy. I mean, you know that. Okay. Anybody want to debate me on that one? <laughs> oh, the planet's going crazy. It's interesting to watch, you know, from like uh, five million miles away from my perspective. Wow. When you look at it, it's just, well, and, and then you get upset about it. It's like nothing makes sense anymore. The people out there, people out there, how many of you just had it with bad drivers and people when you go shopping and even the ones you see on TV, and it's just like, yeah, it's the planet is going crazy, plain and simple, and that's my professional analysis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably a good thing, also. If if they weren't, if everybody was just complacent, nothing would be changing, nothing would be happening. But you can't have complacency right now. We've got more consciousness on the planet. You know, right now, ranging in a couple of percentage points, more more consciousness th uh, than it was prior to March 22nd. You think, well, that's not much. That's a lot. That's a lot. Just a couple of percentage points of more light has it has a great impact in everything. One thing, it's pushing Gaia out sooner than she would she would have ever have thought, or we would have thought. It's happening very quickly. The, the, the planet, I mean the physical planet that you live on, is going through massive changes. A and you're noticing that probably, depending where you live or what news you read, but it's happening. And, and of course the alarmists or the ones who don't really understand what are going on, it's because you drive a car, and that's the whole problem, and uh, because you throw, uh, don't recycle. Uh, and it's, it's not that. Gaia is leaving, and we're gonna, she's going to talk about it soon. Well, you talk about pissed off. If you think I'm upset, wait till Gaia talks at the uh, Light of the Merlin conference. I mean, she's upset for probably good reason. She's on her way out. The light is pushing her out, even if she didn't want to go. But the light is pushing her out. So humans take responsibility for physical reality, for matter, not just the planet. It's much bigger than that. You know, it's Gaia. That's not even her name. You know, that's one of those kind of made up kind of names. You, you know her real name? Adama. A D A M A H. Adama. It's the original Hebrew for what is now called Gaia. And, uh, and I know you're thinking, Adama, Adama, you know, come on, you know, you got to be kidding. Yes, I. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> and and it, it, it relates back to the original, uh, the template for, for, for humans, for <coughs> biology, the Adam Cadman template. That's the original name, uh, Adama. Well, I'll, I'll refer to her as Gaia for now. So Gaia's leaving, and, and the planet is changing, and it's causing people to wake up. Oh, it's happening. Jeez, what, what, the o ocean is boiling almost. Well, it's getting pretty warm. It's like instead of your hot tub, just go to the ocean and you can sit in there. And it's not because humans, uh, for the most part, it's not because humans have abused the planet. It's not. You're learning that there are certain things, of course, you shouldn't do. There's, you're moving away from fossil fuels, but it's not because necessarily fossil fuels are so bad. It's because it's frickin' time to wake up and stop using that old stuff. There is so much energy just in my birthday cake here uh, to power the, the entire state of Colorado for months into this birthday cake, but they haven't tapped into it yet. That's probably a good thing, because if you don't have the consciousness to use all the energy that's in here, if you don't have the balance, probably not a good thing. Somebody's going to get very hurt. So all this is transpiring right now, and, and the planet is going crazy. And you're seeing just the tip of it right now, but people, they, they don't, they're not connecting. They can't find the connection in the old place they used to. 
the things that gave them kind of that connecting point, balance, comfort. Uh, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They're going to extremes. You probably see that. It happens in a situation like this. They get very polarized, very extreme. They're not even thinking logically. It's, you know, it's got to be really extreme thinking. And it's going to continue uh, for, for a long while until there's some fundamental shifts in basic human psychology, human consciousness. So whether the rest of humanity understands it or not, they're at a great shift also. Consciousness-wise, they're not where you're at, but they're undergoing some things. Things are changing so rapidly right now, so rapidly on the planet, and, and everything. The light that started to come in is changing phys physics itself. As I talked about in our last gathering, it's changing molecular structure. It's changing how the particles and the, the, the uh, different portions of an atom spin and relate and communicate to each other. It is at the core, this light is changing the way everything communicates with everything. That's pretty big. That's pretty big. The world is going crazy. What, what are some examples that you have of the world going crazy? Linda, uh, with the microphone, please, while I grab a bite of my birthday cake. Uh, how is the world going crazy? What have you noticed? Somebody said Donald Trump. Uh, well, I, for one, am kind of fascinated by just scrolling the news. Mm -hmm. Just every headline is just completely crazy to me these days. Yeah. No matter which one, no matter what site, no matter, you know, like either side, yeah. every one. And it's just addicting to just see. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just literally addicting to just see. What, what do you think when that's going on? What do you. What, uh, you I just have to remind myself that. Thank God I'm not on the crazy boat anymore. That's definitely them now. <laughs> right. Um, and I always I have to think that's where we're at right now. That, that just so what's has a to headline that struck you recently? Was something that really <laughs> made you laugh, caught your attention? Oh, if you just pick any of the arraignment headlines or any of any of those, yeah. that storyline. Crazy. Just crazy. Crazy. Unprecedented and crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's really happening when you look into the core energies of, uh, he's referring to the arraignment, uh, the, the charges against Donald Trump. <laughs> In case you haven't heard. Who happens to be, <laughs> that, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people here That's from true. other That's places and, and they don't like Donald. Um, <laughs> it, but what's really happening with core energy there, U.S. president being uh, indicted on all these different things. Well, there's. And, and there's, I have to add that he's the front runner from one of the political parties. No, I know. That's the no, this world is not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, well, just lots of power dynamics on both sides because him trying to stay in power and despite everything that is going on, and then everybody else defending him on that side, you know, his supporters. Yeah. Um, and so it's just fascinating how, to me, when I see it, I was like, Okay, how gullible, where does it stop? Where do you stop being gullible to you mm -hmm. know, not believe any of the, was it 70 plus chargers or something? Yeah. Oh no, he's still my guy. You know, yeah. Somebody would say that, not me, I'm not saying yeah, that. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and, um, and regardless of politics, because it's really not about politics right now. I mean, it's And then it's so tied into religion too, and yeah. you know, all the, it's still kind of, you know, Christianity yeah, being hijacked into that. And It's about, it's about and, power uh, to a big extent. It's, yeah. it's a, huge uh, public power play that's going mm -hmm. on. So it's not really even about politics, but uh, you know, it's, it's polarizing people and it's getting people upset and angry and it's getting other people they just wanna, they just wanna run away. Uh, and it's, again, there's just one example of so many crazy things going on. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, so what, what else do you see in the world uh, going crazy? What else do you notice? Everybody always smiles when Linda hands them the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Now, what do you notice with people going crazy? Um, I can't say much about news and stuff. I'm not following. Not following, okay. Uh, what well, occurs to me on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, like very practical things, mm -hmm. I don't see values anymore. Values, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that just because you're getting a little older or? 
<laughs> I'm just lame. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I just look around and just no values. People are ripping each other off. Unreliable. Like, um, just, I don't know. Just like, there's no integrity in people yeah. anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Um, and, and ultimately, a lot of it has to do with that, I guess you call truth. People are trying to find truth and they're just not finding it. Mm. And that causes kind of a degradation of values. And uh, But they're, they're, they're trying to have some values, but they just don't, don't know what's true anymore. So mm. they end up really not having any. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing to, to watch that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, governed by circumstances. Yes. And um, they just can find that, you know, solid anchor point in themselves. Right. And they don't really know that they have a say in it. Right. And um, they're just twisting and turning as the wind blows. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. kind of hard for me to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that you're right. They're just not grounded and they're, they're uh, but they're not because everything is changing. And what they used to ground with just isn't there anymore. It's changing so fast. Mm. And then, then they're lost. They're like uh, walking zombies in a way. And, and then what attracts them is these extreme elements that are out there, I extreme on any side, but they're looking, they go to something extreme. They, they need the drama. They need the energy feeding off of it. They, they need to feel alive. And I see a lot of searching on the internet so yes. like going for answers to, to the internet, you know, yes. Google <laughs> right, right. and stuff. And there's just so many misinformation out there. Mm -hmm. So they're just being overwhelmed, you know, with uh, whatever comes at them when they're just looking out there and everything's just seemed devastating. You know, when you just go out there mm -hmm. and um, at least, you know, it, I'm kind of deriving these from, you know, my environment. So yes. wh how I see people kind of try dealing with life. Yeah. There, there's um, almost a desperate attempt to try to find some truth, uh, but where do you find it? Not, not on the internet, uh, not with many other people, yeah. and, and then it becomes really frustrating. Yes. Yeah. For me, there was a huge tur turning point when I realized others don't know. You know? Right. right. And I was literally having a major panic attack when I realized it's, it's me, the answer. You know, it's... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. There's nothing to hang on to, yeah. you know? This part of the overall big change is that, uh, that people start realizing that the answers aren't out there. Mm. I mean, most of you started to realize that many, many years ago. You realized that uh, the answers are within, and that's a tough yeah. one, but... Uh, yeah, it was years ago for me, too. Humanity is just <laughs> really recently. starting to realize that, and that's scary. Mm. Really scary when you know you like to think there's there there is some beings who really have the answer, some very advanced beings on the planet, or God that has the answers, or Jesus, or whatever mm. it happens to be, and then it all starts crumbling down, and you realize suddenly they don't have the answers. We're all in trouble, you know, mm. until you realize that it's all, always right there. Yep. Good. Couple more. Crazy. What's uh, what do you notice in the world right now? Uh, how it's going crazy? Hello. Hi. Um, Good before to see I you. say my answer, I just want to tap on the Scots, the political thing, because mm -hmm. you know me, politics. But right. uh, <laughs> but no, I think transparency is is a thing that the Trump thing has really brought up. That we're now getting to see what was probably always there. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Uh, my answer, Julie and I just drove out to California and back um, to see our mom, and holy cow, you talk about driving, yeah. So there's, we call it glumping, where people glump together, and, and we would try to get between the glumps of people, and then people would be just flying by, and it was, uh, that's what I've been seeing of the madness, yeah, on the roads, just people crazy driving. Crazy, crazy, yeah. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, anything out in California? Any crazy? <laughs> I want to say it's it's worse there, but Colorado was actually the, probably the hardest part of our trip. They yeah. had like these traffic signs up, uh, road closed ahead, left lane closed ahead, and you get up there and it wasn't closed. And it, but everybody <laughs> had stopped for this up on I-70. Yeah. Or anybody been up there lately? It's just like nuts. So yeah, and it's an example uh, of everything. You know, just not making sense. The the dots not connecting the same absolutely. anymore. Uh, because everything is changing very fast. And then people, by human nature, they try to adapt to it. 
uh, they try to say, okay, yesterday was really crazy. Uh, I should be able to get through today. And they just <laughs> adapt and adapt. But ultimately, a lot of them break. They, they just can't adapt anymore. Yeah, sure. Good. You see it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Great. Uh, a little change on the question now. Um, instead of the world going crazy, you going crazy. So what are you noticing with yourself going crazy? Linda? Yeah. <laughs> Terry? <laughs> I... <laughs> It was Harry. Terry, not Terry. Terry. Yeah. <laughs> I notice disappointment in how, I'm not sure how to say this, but how my body responds to light and right. loosens up crap that I didn't know was so tight. And then the challenge comes, you either panic or receive. And which have you been doing? Receiving. Good. Good. What's that all about with the body? It's a release of old uh, beliefs. It's a lot of things. I mean, it, you don't mind me jumping in here, well, but it's jump. a lot of things. It's this body is a foreign object. It's really not you. It's, you know, it's, it's just a bunch of biology that's glumped together. Uh, and it kind of works most of the time and then it dies. And this body is no different uh, if you were going to go out and infuse yourself in a tree or uh, a, a, a the water cooler over there, or anything else. It's just, it's biology. It's really not you. But humans for so long have gotten used to this. They identify with the body and their biology. It's not you. You could just as well infuse your consciousness in a robot. Truly. You infused it in a robot called biology that, uh, you know, with the atoms and the molecules and everything else that are smashed together. And then you identified with it. You could you could infuse your your consciousness in a car, and and then become a living car. So what's happening with the body issues right now is the light is pushing the whole thing. It's not your body, Terry. Uh, it's biology that's uh, clumped together, spinning around, held together by gravity, spinning around, and there's a, a large degree of light or consciousness in it, but it's not yours and. You're being pushed in your body right now, your biology. Uh, you know, it's, I talked recently saying uh, what's really happening right now is this light is pushing out darkness. In a way, your body fits in that category. It's a lot of darkness. I mean, it's really not you. It's this burden you've been carrying around and thinking from lifetime to lifetime that this is you. It's not. And, and better than infusing yourself in a robot or an automobile, uh, you don't need to be infused. You are essentially just a light being, a light body. You don't need the infusion into anything. Then this is where it gets fun. You can kind of play when you want to be a body, when you want to be a car or a robot or a bird or whatever. It doesn't matter. But the light is pushing this whole thing. For many of you and are feeling the pain and saying, I'm sick and tired of this physical body. Good. It's about time. It's about time to say, this is not me. And then to transcend that old thought that you're, you're stuck in here and realize, I can play with it now. I can pretend that I'm biological or robotic or whatever it happens to be. And break yourself loose from the, the prison of biology. You said you weren't in prison. You are in prison in, in your body and in your environment. And that's okay. When you realize it, and you realize now it's time to go beyond that, this is the moment you've been waiting for all of your life. And we're there. That's why I'm so damn excited, because we're there. And most of you are looking at me like, what is he on today? <laughs> birthday cake. <laughs> Too much birthday cake the other night. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. A uh, couple, two more. Two more. What's the crazy that you're going through? 
I've been noticing that I'm not as excited or as interested in things that I've been interested before. Like there's just kind of a... What hmm. were you excited about before? Oh, I love my work that I do. Oh. And I haven't found it as interesting. What kind of work do you do? I do business coaching. Oh, good. Yeah. Why is it not as interesting? It just, it kind of feels the same. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe it's, maybe, um, uh, what, how do I put it nicely? Um, <laughs> I won't put it nicely. <laughs> maybe it's time you got rid of that, that old stuff. You kind of wove a lot of good wisdom into bad business practices or in, right. into trying to adapt to the people you're working yeah. with. And then you realize... It doesn't really work. No. Not compatible mm -hmm. anymore. Time to break free. Right. And you could actually now develop some phenomenal uh, business energy assessments. Mm -hmm. You go in and assess a business, their energy, uh, not a, like an MBA type, but like a mm -hmm. metaphysician type. But they're probably going to run you out of town. Probably. <laughs> but actually, there are some that would listen yeah. at this point. But uh, to energy evaluation, just feel into the imbalances mm -hmm. in the company and, and mm -hmm. help them put it back together. Yeah, That would be fun. Yeah. What other passion yeah. uh, don't you have passion for? Um, that's it, mostly. Yeah. yeah. What, what yeah. are other things you like doing in life? Um, I love my dogs. I love uh -huh. walking my dogs. Yeah. I live near a beautiful park. I love walking around there. Yeah. yeah. How is the relationship with you and the dogs? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because um, I enjoy them. Dogs are you. <laughs> no, they are. Yeah. They're not outside beings. Dogs are dogs are extensions of your own energy. Uh, they're they're just you. Dogs are dogs are actually an amazing reflection of who you mm. are. And if you're pretty content with yourself, you're going to have a good relationship with your dog. And uh, they're a constant source of giving. Yeah. And then yeah. you receive, and yeah. without feeling bad about it, or without feeling, oh, you know, I can't be always taken from my dogs. What? You, it's just you giving to you. Yeah. So good. What, yeah. what kind of dogs? Um, one is a Shih Tzu, and one was supposed to be a Shih Tzu, but I think she's probably a Pekingese. She's oh. a rescue. What do you mean supposed? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. One more. Crazy in your life. I, uh, everything is going crazy, and that's a good thing. Supposed to. If it wasn't, that means this whole thing with the apocalypse, Heaven's Cross, was a failure. So the fact that the world's going crazy is good. Am I crazy? Yeah, what, what's crazy in your life? Um, have you felt like screaming out lately? I not only have felt, I have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> About what? Relation. You're supposed to be this enlightened master uh, floating. Yeah, supposed to be. Supposed to be. <laughs> and then you feel bad because, well, I'm supposed to be enlightened, uh, I'm supposed to be realized, and yet I want to scream out. Right. About what? Relationships. Relay oh, they suck. Yeah. Boy, we could talk a long time about that. So do you want to share with us uh, intimate personal details? <laughs> Um, Relationship what? It wasn't what you thought it'd be, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess I knew. Um, yeah. So it's receiving what I know I, I have to do. Yeah. But it's, there's definitely a, a tough, painful, hurt there level is. to it. What's yeah. the real tough part about it? I don't know. Just... Ah. Oh, wait. Okay, hold on. Hold uh, okay. on. Okay. Recovery. Rewind. Recovery. Rewind. You're lucky you're close to the bathroom. <laughs> and by the way, I have to pause and let uh, people right watching in online who are new. Uh, we, we don't use that phrase. I, know, I don't I know. know. Because then you don't know, and then you're stupid. You, you say, I have That's yet part of the crazy. to receive, <laughs> I have yet to the, receive the, the answer. You never say, I don't know, because then you believe it. And it's like, I don't know. And you go through life, you're an I don't know her. Well, I don't know. And, and it's pathetic. So uh, anyway, go ahead. I just wanted to let them know. People are saying, what's wrong with saying I don't know? I say it all the time. Uh, go ahead. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, the question was about relationships. What's, what's really the basic, what's the real issue going on here? Well, it's 
it's the fear of the unknown and you identified yourself a lot in the past how you take care of others and how you nurture them and how you give to them and that's changing you can't do that anymore sorry that's not receiving that's that's giving of yourself all the time uh, being a doormat and and you're having to learn that you can't take care of the rest of the world much less uh, in a relationship and then the dynamic you set up previously was, okay, I'm going to be kind of be the caregiver here. I'm going to really keep uh, the, the direction and the life force in our relationship. And suddenly part of you is saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. And your partner is like, what? You know, what's, what's wrong with you? You know, you're being such a bitch these days. You're not taking care of me, doing everything for <laughs> me. So, you know, and it's because you're changing. And that's a good thing. I mean, unless you like relationships like that. Not really. No. No, you really don't. Relationships are really, really tough. And uh, you, generally speaking with Chambra, uh, you're, you're, in the, you're in the getting abused portion of the relationship. You, you, you think you have to do everything in that relationship. And that's got, it's got to change. <coughs> it's not receiving. Receiving, it's, it's really balanced. Yeah, it feels like receiving yeah. crap. Receiving crap, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what are you going to do about it? Pick it up and move it out. Yeah, I'm going to give you another advice here in just a minute, but uh, about Thank what you. to do about that. Thank you. And relationships have got to be one of the biggest issues. And I'm going to make a statement. Calder is going to get mad at me, and Linda, and everybody else, but. Relationships don't just don't old types of relationships, the old way of relationships don't look good on you anymore. They really don't. Uh, you're so used to being uh, kind of a servant in a relationship and, and the leader, but yet you're getting taken advantage of. That will not work out in the light. It won't. It will hurt. It will cause a lot of uh, craziness in your own brain. You're going to wonder what's wrong with you and why things hurt and why relationships. It's getting shoved out right now because it's, it's, not, it's not in real harmony with you. you. You just can't go on that way. And yeah, it's really tough to, in a relationship to say, we're done. And then you go through all the guilt and you know, what's going to happen to me and I'm never going to find anybody and blah, blah. And then they whine and complain to you and try to get you back. You know, it's just not going to work unless they're at a compatible level, at a compatible level with you. And you're not the one going to make them compatible either. They have to rise to that occasion. In the meantime, stop babysitting them. Stop really uh, receiving crap. Uh, you've had enough of that, lifetimes of it. Sacrificing yourself in relationships for what? You're not really helping them. And then you make yourself miserable. Okay, this is fun, isn't it? Uh, I so love this. Okay. So it's a crazy, crazy thing. We're, we're done for the moment. It's a crazy, crazy world out there, and it's not going to get less crazy. <coughs> it's going <coughs> to continue. And I'd like you to be okay with that, with what's happening on the planet right now. There are, there are more shifts, changes, uh, and, and everything else going on right now than ever before. People. Uh, don't know where to find their balance points anymore. You know, they rely on certain things, whether it was uh, a parent, a spouse, a job, a way of thinking, uh, a group that they belong to. They find their balance there. And it's not happening anymore because even those are changing. So the world goes crazy. Part of them, part of them takes, uh, they get on these medications to calm their nerves, and that's really going the wrong way. Some of them just kind of, kind of crawl in, uh, in into a dark place within themselves, into their inner cave. They can't deal with it anymore, so they just retreat and withdraw. Not like what you've done when you go within, you're looking for the answers, they're looking for a cave. And so they, they retreat. Others go extreme. They act out. They, they find extremist activities, uh, and a lot of times, uh, not even just politics or anything, but something dramatic. They go for drama because drama kicks up the energy level 
and reminds them that they're alive. So you're going to continue seeing it all around you and be okay with it. Be okay with it. And know all the time the reason why this is happening, why the world is going crazy, is because you're letting your light in. <laughs> it's, it's your fault. Uh, and <laughs> the planet is going through an incredible transformation. We've talked about it. I don't need to go into a lot of details, but it is truly right now the birthing of a new human species. Uh, it is it is an amazing time on the planet, and, and yes, there is there is chaos. Uh, there is a lot of fear right now. There is there is a lot of pain, emotional pain, physical pain, uh, but all these have to do with the light moving out old darknesses on the planet, and and it was time. It was actually past time for this to happen. I've been pretty clear with all of you about your role right now, and it's to bring that light in and let it shine on the planet. That is going to have make the biggest difference of anything. And yes, that very light that you are radiating is causing a lot of a lot of ripples on the surface, a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion, but it's really ultimately change for the planet. It's ultimately this about this becoming the, the planet of true consciousness. Long overdue. Long overdue. Long overdue. Humans have been uh, battling in their bodies. They've been battling each other. They, not a lot has really changed in a long time, and now it is. What comes of this, the, the, really the, probably the highest potential right now, is after a transformational process here on the planet, is uh, this becomes a planet of true consciousness and true love. And I, I know I've been ridiculed for s- some of my statements a lot. Uh, I made a statement in, in the past, uh, and I don't understand why people get upset. I said, this is the planet where love was first experienced. And I mean, this was it. It was here where you came and you you fell in love with another, ultimately to learn how to love yourself. And there's those who have taken great offense. No, there was these advanced civilizations that, you know, that's where love came from. Or um, that well, no, God is all love. God wasn't all love. God was nothing. Uh, just God was consciousness awaiting experience. How would have God known what love was, or even your I am until you experienced it? That's that old thing. God, God never saw a sunset until you saw it through your eyes. So uh, people have been got offended. I said, "Well, this was the planet of of love. It's where it first happened. And that's why sometimes these um, aliens come here. They're trying to find." Where that love is in you? Is it in your toes? Is it in your ear? Is it in your heart? Where, where is love? And they come here and do anal probes and don't find anything, and they go back home and say, Oh, that was bad. Oh, you know, didn't find love though. <laughs> I was looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Hi, Linda. <laughs> She's over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's the same way about consciousness. This will become the planet of true consciousness, of true light. That's going to affect everything in the other realms, in in the rest of this universe. And it's a pretty big universe, but this universe is tiny compared to all the other dimensions that are non-physical. And what you're doing here right now, I'm not trying to flatter you, I'm not trying to scare you either, but what you're doing here right now with consciousness makes all the difference. It's the time of the emergence of a new human species, and I'm not just talking about the biology, but also the mind, and also awareness or consciousness. There's some that get really upset when I say, "No, humans are the greatest beings of all in all of creations. Humans are the grandest." Why would they get upset with me for saying that? I I, I really wonder. I, they they get very irritated with me. I know why. Because they want to believe that there's some advanced civilizations out there. It's their hope that there's more than this. <laughs> I can understand that to a degree, but there's not. Now, 
humans do dumb things. Humans do really dark things at times. A lot of times humans are just lost, but still humans are the greatest of all beings because of what you have subjected yourself to here. Putting yourself in this, in this time, space, gravity, density, forgetting who you are, they don't do that in other places. It's not the extreme that what you have here. And if you can be here, you can infuse yourself into a physical reality, into a physical body, forgetting everything because of the density of, of what you have surrounding you, you deserve a lot of awards and credits and acknowledgement. You know, stupid things at times, yes, but under the circumstances, hell no. Hell no. And yes, humans, they, they go off in some bad directions at times, but if suddenly all the veils to, were to be removed, all the limitations removed, all of the things like uh, karma and uh, sin and everything else, all those the physical, mental, psychological things, those veils were removed. Humans wouldn't do what they do. But under the circumstances, under the intense pressure, yes, they do some things. But I contend that humans are the grandest. Under the circumstances, heroic. And I know there's some real putzes out there, but all in all, humans are, they are heroic. And I mention that because, uh, first of all, this belief that there's got to be some advanced civilization out there, uh uh, there's really not. Unfortunately, maybe, but there's really not. It's not the Palladians. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a fan of Palladians and uh, at all. I, I get to, I'll do a session on why I hate Palladians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have done more to interfere with this planet than than any other beings. Uh, they're liars, deceptive, and everything else. They, I don't want to carry on about it right now. Actually, I do, but uh, <laughs> Calder won't let me. Uh, but I want you to consider this right now. Humanity is right at that turning. We're in the turning point, not coming up to it. We're in the turning point of this planet, and it all has to do with two elements, consciousness and technology. In the future, and this is not science fiction, this is, this is absolutely on its way to happening, with the ability through the consciousness and uh, technology, the ability of things like nanotechnology to uh, make things out of thin air, the ability with technology to uh, to create life on other planets, the ability for technology to an AI to very quickly uh, create assembly devices that will uh, enable humanity to now really explore the realms of this universe very quickly. And when you go out there, you're not going to find a lot of other life forms like this, a lot of other intelligence. And if there were, and they were more advanced than humanity, they would have been here by now. Your humanity's right on the verge right now of uh, breakthroughs that are going to allow you to uh, not have to get in a little rocket ship and take forever to get to Mars, but to have other methods for doing it. If there is an advanced civilization that's even, let's say, a hundred years more advanced than Earth, they would have been here by now. You're the ones that are doing it. Now, I've gotten off track here, but I, I love doing that. Right now, for what you're doing at this moment, uh, the biggest thing for you, for Shambra, the biggest thing is to understand receiving. We've been talking about it for the last couple of months. We've been talking about it in depth in Kihak, and you know it sounds really nice. Oh yeah, I'm going to receive, and all these just gifts are going to flow my way. But then you realize the reality of it. It's tough, especially when you're so ingrained in a working hard for everything situation, when you have to push and shove and uh, use all your might and willpower, and to suddenly switch that into 
I am in receiving mode. I don't have to work for it anymore mode. And that's really what we're doing. It's the most important thing. And it's nothing you should work at. <laughs> you say, oh, I'm going to work at receiving. You just missed the point there. <laughs> it's not a wrestling competition. And it's not you're trying to outsmart something or even yourself. It is simply receiving. It's this is your energy out there and all around and in here. Can you receive it now? It's a, a total change in everything. Uh, the, the way humanity has been going, mass consciousness, you, 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 you even have tried to work at your own realization. I'm going to study it. I'm going to do all these disciplines and practices. How far did that get you? Not so far. So you take a deep breath and you realize it is about receiving. Receiving what? Everything. Everything. No longer efforting, no longer pushing, uh, fighting for it, but absolute receiving. It's actually the natural way energy flows and moves. It's going to seem unnatural to you because you've been doing the opposite. Pe people, humans, have been doing the opposite, but it is the way the river flows. You receive it. You allow it into your being. And suddenly you realize, I don't have to make a decision about my partner and what to do. I don't have to stress in my mind and like, oh, now I've got to go through the process of breaking up and what do we do. You receive yourself. You receive your own energy, your own light, and these things take care of themselves. And it goes counter intuitive to what most of you have been doing. You don't need to uh, go back to the old human way of trying to figure it out. You don't need to figure out your next job. You don't need to figure out your next relationship. You don't need to figure out any of that. You start receiving, and it's all right there. It's really strange because you're, you're not used to it, and you're used to having to survive work hard and, and to just get barely enough. That's got to change now. It's got to change. And I'd like to use this August 5th Shoud, the year 2023, as the shifting point for that. Some of you will start, whatever you want to say, going through it, opening up to truly receiving. Others of you are still going to struggle with it. and and be calling me up my customer service line late, and it's not working for me. I've been working at receiving. I've been trying. And yeah, that's the problem. You've been trying. You're not just receiving. Receiving is a natural flow, and it's not receiving from some unknown God or angelic councils. It's receiving from you, from your soul, from your I am. It's the biggest thing you can do right now for yourself, ultimately for the planet. This planet is still ingrained with suffering and working hard and efforting and battling, and it's got to end. I mean, I'm not just saying that. It's got to end because there's too much light right now. You open the door on March 22nd to light, and it's come in, and now all these other things, the, the old ways, aren't going to work out. You're not so good at receiving because you've been giving, 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 working, working, working for a long time. And some of you I've seen in this past month do incremental receiving a little bit, but then you shut down. I think last month I asked a couple of you here to really allow receiving during this month. See how it goes. So, uh, Vince, I believe you are one of those, if I, if I remember correctly. Microphone to Vince, please. How is the receiving going? It's difficult to receive when you're still. Okay, it's very difficult to receive when you're gripping that paddle with both hands. Yes, yes, it is. And and you have uh, a technical engineering background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, smart guy. Maybe. He's pretty smart. <laughs> yeah. And, and so uh, receiving can be a little difficult because uh, you start analyzing. How do I receive? When do I receive? Is there an optimal time? Is it five no, in the morning? I, I, if you pardon my interjection, sure. I think it's because I'm a control freak. 
Well, okay. Well, I was leading to that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was building up to it. I didn't want to shock you all at once. Yeah, and, and how well does control work with receiving? Not a damn bit. doesn't. And what does it feel like to give up control? Uh, lost. Yeah. yeah. It's scary. Very scary. Yeah. But how does that control really work for you in the long run? That, well, that's another thing. I'm impatient. Right, right. When that adds adds to it. So, yeah. How do how do impatience and receiving? Enemy. Yeah. No, you actually you can take all that. You can take the control, and the impatience, and the frustration, and the intellectual uh, mind games, and use that right now for receiving. You can channel that to receiving. Yeah, because you realize the control games that you played were little games. Uh, receiving is a big control game. Right, right. We're, I mean, we're, we're going from the human to the meta. Th that's correct. That's correct. And, and even things like impatience, you can channel that to receiving. You want it now. No waiting. I don't, you don't want to go another year, two, five, or anything like that. Now is actually. I don't the time. even want to go another week. Okay, good. No, I like that. You don't want to go another week, nor should you. It's right now, it's in the air. Right now, it's, it's about letting that receiving come in, just wide open, full blast, no holding back, no wondering if you're doing it the right way, just frickin' receive. Uh, it's just, that's it. So channel all that, uh, whether it's anger or fear or control or anything, you channel that towards flat out receiving. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I believe Carrie, uh, while well, you're blowing your nose, <laughs> yes. Um, cue, the, cue the theme music, Peter. Yeah. How is the receiving going? I made it to today. That's and really honorable, good. notable. Yes, uh, you're an inspiration. How is it going, Carrie? Great. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad. I mean, you... isn't this the best birthday present to see me? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Right? It, it is. I've just it's been your waiting. Wishes? All... Let's stop dancing around on this. Okay. How's all the right, receiving serious. going? What's the problem? You, you... What's my problem? What's, What's the your... problem? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Don't ask me. Mo. My problem is you're not going to like problem? the answer. Um, How? Why haven't you done it, Carrie? Done what? Receiving. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was. I'm going to throw back all yeah. your best gems right in your face. So you're dodging the question. Uh, right. you're, you're, you're playing a little game here. How is the receiving going? You know, I you're, should go in the bathroom now. Oh, oh, that would be good. Okay. Flush the toilet when you're you done. You can ask me why I'm in here. Go ahead. Does so, the microphone still pick up? You see up there? how sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a magic door. It doesn't pick up when you close Linda it. Linda doesn't like this. Now let's be serious. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. All right. Receiving. How's it going? Grand. What have you received? Odd dreams. Of. Well, I did dream of Nazar. And he was like this Jesus Christ figure, and it was all colorful and it was tropical. And he said to me, he was like sitting and, and he had worshipers and it was Does all colorful. Anybody want to hear this story, or do we? Yeah, yeah. And then no, he goes, he no, goes, no. you really are unique. And I'm like, duh. No, okay. no. I was like, um, Carrie, uh, let, let's be real about I this. Don't be so honest. you know, uh, let's put aside all the joking and everything. You're a fighter. You're a battler. I mean, and it's done you pretty good for the most part. It's going to be really hard for you to shift, to turn, uh, and, and to be a receiver. And you're going to joke about it, and you're going to you know, play games about it, but you're being asked by yourself, Carrie, are you done with that old game? Are you done with being the fighter? Are yes. You, are you? Should we see if there's 800 swords in my closet? Mm -mm. No. Okay, no. I'm done being a fighter. What is it? You're, it's like you're allergic to receiving. What, what's that about? I'm, wow, I'm, I'm being serious the, here. I gotta mop my brow. <laughs> <sighs> well, I mean, you. Okay, <laughs> I can't even. I I don't know. 
I don't know. She has a comp- uh, compulsive desire to be in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, so. No, no, really. I'll tell word. you this. I've been trying not to battle. I mean, this, I've tried really, really hard. And, and I tell myself, walk away. Don't say anything. You know, those voices. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I can just be this hippie girl now. And I'm going to be new agey. And I go with the flow. No one triggers me ever. I don't want to battle anymore. Nobody believes that. No, but Carrie. Okay. God, I am so You're so used to Jesus. getting what you need and want in life by fighting for it. And, and you're a good fighter. I mean, if I, if I was going to have a team of fighters, you'd definitely be on it. Uh, no, you're really, really good at it. You do it with a certain amount of style and class, and <laughs> you're, just, you're just badass. But for you and, and for, for people like you, you're stereotypical for, uh, typical for some chambre, you're going to have a really tough time with this. I've already had a tough time <laughs> with this. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's about being able to let all that stuff go okay. and, and realize that the only thing you're going to be confronted with then is yourself, your own energy. And it's that when you let down that guard, you, it's not going to be about other people are going to come and take stuff away from you or give you shit. You're going to be confronted by your own energy and your own self. But that's a good thing. And then, Carrie, instead of having to battle for things, instead of getting into um, street fights or office it's fights like or I anything like that. Like I street fights, but okay. But you do. Well, you do. Uh, suddenly you realize, oh my God, this is so easy. And it's just flowing. And it's all been pre designed for me. I didn't have to think all this through. It's pre designed by myself, my soul, my, my, my human master. And it's so freaking appropriate. And, but you can't get there by fighting it. And okay. And you tell me that I throw away my sword in the, in the fire and I have 800 in the closet and I go, oh, well, I better go throw away my sword again. I don't want to be a battler. I don't want to fight. This is insanity. No amount of marabs. I, and now you're like, you're going to face yourself. Well, what an awesome fucking future. Thank you. I, I don't know how to change this. I have been doing it the same way. I don't want it to be this way. Especially, I don't want to be called out by you. I don't want to be yes, called you, out actually, by you anymore. Actually you do. I'm, no, that's I don't. Another story. I, I have sweat trickling down my back right here. But I'm mopping my brow. Okay, Carrie, deep breath. It's real easy. Uh, it's real easy, but you're going to feel vulnerable, okay? And just receiving and allowing. You're used to working and, and battling and fighting. You're going to feel vulnerable, but then you're going to feel really good. Well, thank you. You say, told me what I've heard where my have whole you been life. been all my life, right? Thank you. Okay. It's what I've always heard with very little solutions. Okay, not a problem. I got this. Okay. I got it. Thank you, dear. She does love it. And me. You love me, don't you? Not anymore. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a wife. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so um, next, uh, Tad, 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 uh, Tad. We uh, talked last month uh, about you. You, you got to go. You and Carrie. You know. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up here. Come on up here. So I, I called. So I, I called you out last month. I can't month. box and talk at, yeah, with let this. Let me and be a gentleman here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I called you out last month. You did. And I said, you know, you're a fighter, kind of like Gary. Uh, you're you're a fighter, and you you're used to making things happen in your life by yep, getting dressed up, putting in your boxing outfit. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, it served you. Mm-hmm. Every one of you listening to this that. That's had that uh, that desire, and every one of you has. We're going to fight for it, and f- fighting can be as obvious as this. There's other ways to fight and battle for things. It's not going to work anymore. Uh, it's really not. You're you got too much light. Even if you wanted to go back to to this, you you really can't. And then you're just going to be screwed up in the middle. 
So it's time to let that go. And I got to ask you, are you ready to stop the battling and the fighting? Yes, I am. Are you just saying that for the viewing audience? I have stopped. I, it's not, it, it's a process in my heart, in my awareness, in my consciousness. I am not driving that. You can't, it's hard to drive a car with shit like this on your hand. <laughs> you know, it's hard to do anything. Yeah. Can't even pick yeah. my nose. I mean, you know, it's, so but no, are, yes, I have. I am, and I, I have, and I am. So are you really, truly, I mean, here in front of all Chambra and everybody, are, and, and particularly Gary, where's Gary? Uh, Gary, he's hiding in the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> with Carrie. Uh, I, I, are you truly right? I, and I'm, 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 we're on stage and yeah. all, but I'm really serious. Uh, I, I, I am really serious, also. But I look at you and go, "How is she ever going to do this? How is she going to get into the receiving mode when she's so used to the battling mode? And you've got this business venture that you mm -hmm. have, and you're plowing your way through it. You're muscling and headbutting your way through it. What are you going to do about that?" You know these things. These things don't come easy. You know, get, know the these things don't come easy. Getting into business and trying to get your product on the shelf, and yeah. you got to work hard for it. And you got to fight for it, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe everything else in your life except that you can you can receive, but that you got to keep working at. You no, put, you've invested a lot into it. I have. Yeah, I have invested a lot. So you're just going to let that go? In a way, yes. No. Yes. yes no. I have let it you go. see what's happening here? <laughs> Ask three times. The first time it was like yes. Second time, eh, not so sure. Third time, yes, no. Answer. Okay, I want you to take a deep breath first. <laughs> I love having the microphone. Okay. Are you ready to put the gloves away? Hang them up. Yes, I. Oh, stop! Oh, good. Oh, good. I thought you were going to justify. No. Uh, let's try that again. Are you ready to hang the gloves up? Take off the uniform stop the battling and just receive yes good thank you gary would you bring that up here yes he's not gonna clunk you with it he's saying hey this is a time to symbolically hang up the gloves okay you got to take them off yourself yes Good. Okay. Yeah, hang them up. Uh, in the uh, the robe. Boxing shorts. Shorts. <laughs> okay. I've been asked to read this, ladies and gentlemen. Fellow Chambra, Tad Tandler, poster child of powering, hangs up her gloves, trades positive and thinking and powering for allowing and receiving. I'm, I'm bringing that to the Ascended Masters Club tonight. Okay. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Linda, microphone. It's just a little way of illustrating. This is a, it, it's a, the biggest fundamental change. It is the alt, the, the primary alt, to go from the fighting, the boxing, the the powering through things and just start receiving. And it does feel vulnerable. And then your mind questions, what am I doing? Am I just making myself, you know, totally open and available and no defensive systems? Yes. It's time that starting with Shambhara on this planet, we shift that paradigm, uh, the paradigm and it goes also away from the suffering. When you're battling, you're also suffering. And this applies to everything, not just the way you uh, are with other people in your life or how you get things, but this whole thing with the boxing and the fighting, it's with your body also. It's with your thoughts. That's why you do this. You're, you're sparring in your own mind. You're doing, I got to think positive, but then you got the negative thoughts there and they're clashing like that. Hang up the gloves and let it go. Let's go to this point of true receiving. It is the natural way. Let's take a good deep breath. I, I want to uh, ask a special request for the back desk. Um, I'd like to play that 
opening music video again. I know Calder's arguing with me. You're not allowed to do it, but yeah, you have my blessing if anybody asks you. Let's tell him St. Germain said it was okay. Uh, just give it just a moment here, and we'll start it up. I want you to feel into this. I want you to feel, there's something in the air, and it's absolutely true. And it's time some of you, at least, even a small percent of you, break through. The rest of you then can do it. Breaking through the old paradigm, the old way of having to effort for everything, and to figure it out, and to plan, and to work hard, and to suffer. It's time that that ends. This, this is th this moment of complete change in really in consciousness is what you've been waiting for all your life. Let's put it on again and the house lights down. Oh, 
So, indeed, you have been waiting for this moment uh, all of your lifetimes. This moment where we transcend the, the old, hard, suffering, fighting way of doing things, not needed anymore. It's time to receive, and it's receiving yourself. It's receiving the I am, your own light into your own being. You don't have to think this through. You don't want to think it. I mean, you don't want to have get into the mind and you take a deep breath and you realize this is that moment. It's, it's in the air. You've been waiting for it and now it's here. All you have to do is allow it and receive it. It becomes a whole different way of living. It becomes a whole different way of consciousness embodied on this planet. That's what you've been working so hard at, but now let's stop the work and just allow. With that we'll put on some music and go into receiving. Let's take a deep breath together. By the way, in the music video, it wasn't a sweet, quiet little thing. It is intense. There is a passion to it. There, there is, I talked to before about taking that anger, wanting to punch through, wanting to just have it right now, the impatience, the frustration, channel that now towards receiving. And it's actually a good thing that you're getting to the point of just being fed up. No tolerance anymore, just something's got to shift. Let's use this occasion right now for it to shift. And please, whoever has that cell phone, leave. Not only the room, but the building. Please, Im immediately, Bonnie. Bye bye. You don't disrupt my mirab with your cell phones. Leave. Now, this is serious stuff. This is what you've been waiting for. I'm not going to let it be disturbed by somebody's cell phone. There's enough distractions. There's enough things that will try to take you from yourself. That I will not tolerate. When we come to this epic point, some of you are going to break through, allow, and receive. Some of you are still going to struggle with it. But know that it's going to come. Know that we're doing this together as a group of beings who have known each other for a long, long time. We're going to reverse that old way of energy and light on this planet into receiving. You don't work at receiving. You don't analyze it. You just allow it. That's it. If you find yourself struggling or stressing with it or wondering if it's working, just take a deep breath and receive. Receive what? It's you. It's your energy. It's, it's the very thing you've always truly wanted to reconnect with your soul. Now just let yourself receive. As if you were you're a musician, you wanted to you wanted to really create a great piece, a great composition. But in the old way, you would have gone out and found the well, the performers, musicians that would have done the strings and the horns and the percussion, all the all the different people needed in the orchestra, and you've spent a lot of time trying to find the right people and rehearsing and practicing, trying to find a, a hall where you could do all this, and contending with all the problems with somebody's violin doesn't work right and somebody got sick, and that's the old way of doing things. Now you're the conductor. 
now you just receive the orchestra. It seems kind of weird because you're so used to doing it the other way, working hard for it. Now you just receive, and suddenly, without even having to plan or anything else, without having to do that, they just start showing up with fine tuned instruments. They start showing up. They start showing up. With their drums, with their keyboards, with their horns, they just start showing up, and it doesn't even take any practicing. They find their seats. You find yourself in the role of the conductor and the creator. And then the music starts effortlessly, beautifully. You wonder is it possible to bypass all that hard work, all that planning and organization, all the having to attend to all little details? And is that really possible? Or are you even then? considered a worthy composer and conductor if you don't go through all that? Once you start hearing that music playing, you realize this is the way to do it. Let it come to you. You don't have to work at it. What is really happening is that you're in harmony with your own soul. Everything just comes to you. It's just there. When you realize how painstaking the old way was, how much suffering, how oh, it took so much time and effort, and even then it didn't sound all that great in the past, doing it the old way. But now, in receiving, it comes to you. music is sweeter than you could have ever imagined. There's so much ease with the whole creation. Why? Because the collaboration is between you, your light, your soul. Every player, every musician that's in the orchestra is actually you. It's actually you. No wonder it's so damn perfect. All in harmony with each other. All creating together. This is receiving. This is being in the flow. Making a big shift here, but it's been a long time in the coming. It's a big shift, and as wonderful as it is, yet there are still challenges because you're used to doing it the old way. You're going to go back, Tad. You're going to go back and try to grab your gloves again, and I'm going to stop you, Carrie. You're going to try to dance around me, not addressing the real question, but I'm going to I'm going to pin you down until you start receiving, until you start living here as embodied masters in joy and in ease. It does require letting go of some of the old ways that you've been doing things. As I said, in receiving, You're actively participating in your own creation, but you no longer have to do all this planning and positive thinking and hoping and, and then getting disappointed that it doesn't work out. We 
It's just there for you. And sometimes you don't even, you didn't even ask for it. Sometimes you don't even know what's there. But then you start realizing the beauty and the perfection. You don't need to call out to your soul and tell it what you need. It already knows better than you do. So now really is just the time of receiving that. And don't, don't tell your soul what your timetable is and all the little details. You're right back to the old way of doing things, the old way of working hard, efforting, controlling. Stop that and just receive. What you're doing here is certainly going to have implications on this life of yours, but you're also going to find out it reaches far into your dreams. I'm going to be very curious in this thousand dreams work that Olivia is doing, how it's reflected in the dreams. See, part of your dreams, your dreams, they work hard. Oh, they, they're just representations of you and non-physical realms, working hard, struggling, battling, running, chasing. What happens when you stop all that and just receive? What happens in your dreams? What happens in your past lives? What if they, too, become part of this whole process of receiving? Hint, they have to. What happens when they stop with the battling and the suffering? Take a deep breath and please receive yourself now. It's that simple. Calder asked me the other day, so what's the difference between somebody that's just sitting on the sofa playing video games all day. And aren't they just receiving? Versus you truly receiving. There's a big difference. They're actually really not in this reality. Uh, they're in a form of escape. They're in a form of uh, really just wasting time. And even in the video games that they're playing all day, what are they doing? Battling, fighting or testing themselves to the extreme. It doesn't mean you just sit around playing video games all day. It means you participate now in what comes to you. When all the band members show up, all the people in the orchestra will show up, you got to do something. You want to do something with them. Create music, dance, whatever it happens to be. Yes, it's still about being actively involved in your own creation. But now you don't have to struggle with it, push it, wear yourself out. Now you simply dance and glide with it. That's the difference. It doesn't mean just sitting around being a slug all day. It means now what comes to you. You create with it. You experience with it. And you express with it. This is truly the biggest shift in consciousness of all. Well, it's one thing to bring that light in from the other realms, but now to use it for this kind of shift, it's the. <laughs> Calder always challenges me when I'm making bold statements, but it's not necessarily a bold statement. It is the absolute truth that you, right now, are going through this amazing shift, and it will eventually affect many others. So take a good deep breath and receive yourself.
This is the moment you've been waiting for. Right now. This is the moment when your very soul, your light body, or your essence now can come in. There's no longer the resistance or thinking you have to fight for it or earn it. It's just right here. Please mark this moment. A time when you knew you were ready. Let's take a deep breath and just receive the goodness, the grace of yourself. I think you all knew something was <laughs> amiss, something was coming up, something was going to happen. Wondering what it was, what, what was going to cause that shift or change. This is what it's all about. Let's take a deep breath together. Good deep breath. Isn't it kind of funny? You know, here in receiving that, I can feel for so many of you, you want to do something with it. You want to, you want to manage it or to tell it where to, what to do. It's like, ugh. okay, good deep breath. Just let it be. Good. So, with that, thank you once again for the birthday greetings. I'm about to make my way back up to the Ascended Masters Club with this little note from Tad about hanging up her gloves. So, with that, remember that all is well in all of creation. Thank you. So, with all that said, I just invite you to take a couple more deep breaths, really allowing integration of this receiving that we've all been a part of, each of us in our own way. Just take a couple deep breaths, really making, allowing for the receiving. Just be with it. Celebrate it. Be with that breath of life. Be with that breath of life. And with that, thank you for being a part of this last Alt Shoud. And we hope to see you again. Thank you so much. And with that, take care of you. Just had a bad day, what? had car trouble on the highway. My stupid boss don't like me. Spill hot coffee on my blue jeans. No money, it ain't funny, but it's still sunny outside. So I keep smelling, I won't start wilding, I just keep living my life. Can't keep.
Get me down, me down. It's only temporary. Can make me frown, me frown. So I ain't ever worried. The world keeps spinning. Life goes on and on. I won't cry for long. Find your girlfriend. Your boyfriend left you, but the party's still going on. Everybody here saying, "Sitting kissing in the kitchen by the bathroom, but you don't let it fizz you. Go hit the bar up, go and get his car up, and tell him that it's karma. Get me down, me down. It's only temporary. All about my numbers. Tell them get up on my face. You don't even know me. You don't even know me. Save it for another day. I am dropping off a drama. All about my numbers. Tell them get up on my face. You don't even know me. You don't even know me. Save it for another day. No big deal. When some you lose, some my life gets real. Won't last forever. Hello. 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 Hello.